welcoming us to tonight's Grace Baptist Partnership Google Hangout. Tonight we will be discussing the subject of scripture memorization. Uh, Christians know of the benefit of committing God's word to memory uh, with with a few uh, having memorized a few verses. Uh, but uh, how about entire books of the Bible? Uh, the psalmist writes in Psalm 119, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And further on he says, I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. This evening we have with us Dr. Andrew Davis who has written the book An Approach to Extended Memorization of Scripture. Uh, he has used this method to commit, I believe, about 35 books of the Bible, uh, not 35 verses, 35 books of the Bible to memory uh, throughout the course of his ministry. Uh, Dr. Davis has been the senior pastor of the First Baptist Church in Durham, North Carolina, since 1998. Thank you very much for joining us this evening, Dr. Davis. It's my joy to be with you. Thank you. We have also with us the General Grace Baptist Partnership, um, General Secretary of the Grace Baptist Partnership, Pastor Barry King, who will lead us through the rest of this interview. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Pastor Barry. Thank you, Kev. It's my privilege, as always. Now, before I hand over to uh, Pastor Barry, I would like to uh, commit this time um, with a word of prayer. Let, let's come before the Lord and pray. Most gracious Lord and Father, we are reminded uh, from your word, um, how can a young man keep his way pure by God and according to your word? And we pray, O oh Lord, that this evening as we discuss this uh, very important subject, O oh Lord, we pray uh, that it may be indeed a benefit for many Christians around the world. Uh, we pray, O oh Lord, that you may lead us and that you indeed bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks. Amen. 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 Over well, to Andy, you, it is great to be able to, uh, to chat with you this evening. And uh, for, for those who, who may not have met you and don't know a lot about you, maybe if you could just give us maybe a little bit of your own background, maybe about how you came to know Christ and about your, your early walk with him. Yeah, it's my pleasure and also my joy to be able to meet you and uh, to communicate with you today. Um, I came to faith in Christ my junior year at MIT. I was an engineering student. Uh, I had been raised in a Roman Catholic family and I had a good upbringing in the Catholic Church, but I did not know Christ as my Lord and Savior. And when I got to college, I just was interested in college life and I was not walking with the Lord. And um, some members of Campus Crusade for Christ, now called Crew, started sharing the gospel with me and uh, were instrumental in, in leading me to Christ. And then I was discipled for the last two years of my college uh, time at MIT. And then when I graduated, I started working as a mechanical engineer, but also in the evenings took seminary classes at Gordon-Conwell in Massachusetts. And... Um, God uh, laid on my heart at one point to go on a, a mission trip to Kenya. And when I came back, I basically focused on vocational ministry preparation while using my engineering uh, degree to pay for that. And so at that point, it became a focus to go into the ministry uh, full time. By the way, in terms of our topic this evening, it was on that mission trip that I began doing an extended memorization of Scripture, beginning with the book of Ephesians. So that's a brief, brief overview. I've been here at this church now for over 17 years, and God's done an amazing work here at First Baptist in Durham, and it's a joy to serve Him here. Oh, that's great. That's great. Well, I'm, I'm interested to hear you uh, are in a mission setting in Kenya on a short-term mission trip, and it was there that you began to memorize the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Tell us uh, a little bit about how that came about. Well, I began doing scripture memorization right away in my Christian life through being discipled by Campus Crusade for Christ. And they used the Navigator's topical memory system. Those were flashcards in which you would memorize individual verses topically. Uh, and so you would learn uh, verses that would connect to various aspects of the Christian life. And so I started to accumulate these cards, 
and the more verses you, you learn, the more cards you had. Some of the guys in our movement had hundreds of these cards on snap rings or, or in, in boxes, and they would memorize these individual topical verses. So the value of scripture memorization was, was uh, part of my discipleship, but again, it was those individual topical verses. Uh, when I was on this mission trip in Kenya, um, things just run at a different pace in Africa than they do in the United States, probably than they do in the UK as well. And so I had to catch a bus back to Nairobi, and I asked this brother that we were working with, I said, now, when does the bus come? And uh, he told me, in the afternoon. So I, I didn't know what that meant, in the afternoon. So, uh, you know, just the way we're wired in the U.S., I was there at 11.50, so I wouldn't miss the bus. I think the bus eventually rolled in around 3 in the afternoon, but I was there with nothing but my Bible. And so after a while, I got the idea it might be a long wait. And so I had the idea at that point, I was reading through Ephesians of maybe starting to memorize it. And so I started with the beginning, you know, verse 1, chapter 1, verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God to the saints in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, etc. And I just started. And I continued through that summer. It was a 10-week mission trip to add verse after verse. And when I got back to the U.S., it was a big decision re-entering my busy, normal pattern of life to do this in the early mornings and to keep up with the book. And uh, I've never regretted it. My next book was Philippians, and then after that, by then I was a full-time seminary student, I added uh, the Gospel of Matthew, and I greatly expanded the number of verses I did per day, six a day. So it was about an hour a day, somewhat like uh, somebody practicing an instrument if they're good at piano or violin. That was what I did every day, an hour a day memorizing. So that was a long time ago, 1986. Okay. So that, that, that was the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Now, I, I guess the issue that some people might wonder about is, have you been able to retain that all of these years? Ephesians seems to be a special case. I will not claim that I have retained all the 30-plus books that I've memorized. What I do say is there was a time that I could recite that entire book from memory. It, the understanding of the book remains. Many verses remain. Even whole subsections remains. And I am convinced that with a, a minimum of effort, I'd be able to get it fresh and able to recite again. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not claiming to be able to say all verses that you can have uploaded, let's say, on the desktop of your, of your unless you're a special uh, person. Some people have gifts, you know, they call it photographic memory. Thing. I don't have that. Uh, but now Ephesians is different. I think the Lord has really blessed me to be able to retain that book at a high level without much review. And so uh, there's just something about it. And I'm preaching through Ephesians now for the first time, 17 years into my ministry here, and it's been such a blessing. So, no, I don't claim to be able to be able to recite all these. And I think it's very important for me to say that. What I advocate is you learn the verses and then say the whole section or book 100 consecutive days. And then I really advocate what I would say, kiss the book goodbye and get on to another book. And don't, okay. don't pridefully try to hold on to everything. Because what's going to happen is you're going to reach a saturation point and a limit. I want people to learn as much of God's Word as they can. Excellent. Excellent. That's, that's very good. Okay. Now, in, in 2016, I'm, I'm encouraging a few friends and, and fellow workers around me to uh, memorize the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. And so I, I've, I've got my uh, trusty copy of the ESV right here beside me, and I've, I've gotten a little bit of a head start on the rest of my friends, and I'm getting those first few verses. And since I have preached from them before, you know, I, I've got a lot of it there. But just assume we know nothing, which is uh, probably not a bad assumption. Uh, and, and we're going to set out to memorize this letter um, in, in 2016. Walk us one, two, three uh, as to how we ought to go about doing this. Well, I think first what I would do is I would make a commitment before the Lord um, to do it and, and just commit it to God uh, to present your body as a living sacrifice and say, what I want to do, I want to do for your glory. And I want to do it so that I can prepare myself. Ephesians 2.10 says that uh, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance that we should walk in them. 
And so some of that preparation also is us, that he's preparing us for good work. So just start with why you're doing it and that it's for the glory of God and not for your own pride or ego or any of that. Uh, and, and just set that before God in prayer. And then mechanically, what I, I think the key to memorization is it's very simple. It's repetition over time. So that you just are settled in and you're going to be repeating these verses over a long period of time. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And so we're just committed to saying these verses day after day after day after day. That's the work of memorization. Uh, the goal of it is insight. It's understanding look. That's what you're trying for. And the discipline of, of perfection and memorization is a means to an end. But the end, the ultimate end, is the glory of God. But the intermediate end is understanding the book, understanding the flow of argumentation. So the understanding all that, then I would begin, and you have to decide your pace. So if somebody's a beginner, I would just say a verse a day is a good pace. I like to recommend a verse a day with a day off per week. Uh, the reason for the day off is it just refreshes you. So you can choose whatever day you'd like to take off. Maybe Sunday's a good to day to take off. But then you would just settle in. And I think at that rate, you're going to be done with Ephesians if you continue in six months, something like that. And so you just begin with the first verse. Now, what I advocate, and people can do what they want uh, about this, but I advocate learning chapter and verse numbers all along. So I like to say 1-1, one, one, like chapter 1, verse 1. So it would be 1-1, one, one, and I memorize NIV 84, um, but ESV is a great translation. So I can't say it in ESV, but in, in, I've already said it in Ephesians 1-1. One, one. I would say 1-1, one, one, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God to the saints in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus. So I would just say that. And what I would do is I would just get the Bible, and I would read it 10 times. Mm -hmm. And I would just kind of burn it in with my eyes, just read it and say it, one, one, Paul and Apostle, just read it ten times. And then close the Bible or set it aside and then say it, recite it ten times. That's your first day. And then you're done, done for the day. And then the next day, uh, I would pick up yesterday's verse, and you probably need to say it, maybe you forgot it a little bit from yesterday, but I would recite yesterday's verse ten times. Mm -hmm. Then I would add the second verse. One, two, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, I would say one, two, uh, grace and peace to you, etc. I would read it ten times, say it ten times. So second day, you're done. Third day, I would say yesterday's verse, which would be verse two, ten times. Then I would say all of the verses that I've learned so far, which is two, together once. Then I would learn the third verse. Um... Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, etc. So that's one, three. And I would read it ten times, say it ten times, then you're done. Then you're going to start getting into a pattern. It goes like this. Yesterday's verse, ten times. All of the verses you've learned so far in the book, once. And then the new verse, read it ten times, say it ten times. So little by little, the all of the verses together section is going to be longer and longer. It's just going to take longer and longer. And honestly, that is the memorization. It's saying all the verses that you've learned once a day, nonstop, for a long time. Okay. And you're just going to keep adding more and more verses. Just take a day off, give yourself a break, and then get back to it. And then just keep saying it and reciting it and learning one more verse, one more verse. And then what I like to do when I get to the end of the book, I like to say the whole book 100 consecutive days. Or if you want to take a day off, you can say it 100 days with a day off per week. And mm -hmm. that is really invaluable, you know, just saying that whole book day after day after day. I could recite the whole book of Ephesians at a comfortable pace in about 13 or 14 minutes. Okay. So, so it doesn't take that long. I mean, it's just it's about 15, 20 minutes a day. Okay. Okay, very, very good. Now, one of the things that you were talking about is the importance of, of setting pace, and you were suggesting for, uh, for beginners that maybe they should think about maybe one verse a day. That's a, a reasonable pace. Yeah. Um, your, your present pace, did you say something like six verses a day? That is not my present pace. It is the pace that I increased to back when I was in seminary and I was learning the Gospel of Matthew. Gospel yeah, of okay, that's right. 
was over a thousand verses, and that would have taken over three years, three and a half years at a verse a day. Yeah. So I just wanted to increase my pace. I wanted to learn more scripture. So honestly, I mean, it's just whatever God leads you to do. Some people just don't have the time that they can put in. But I was called to vocational ministry. I was called to be a preacher and teacher of the Word of God. And so God gave me the grace to spend a lot more time on memorization. By then, it was about an hour a day. I don't do that now, though. I don't do that now. Now, I'm really in a pace of a verse a day, and I, I generally don't miss a day. I take a day off a week, but I'm doing the minor prophets now. I'm in the book of Amos, and I just keep adding new verses. My goal is understanding as much scripture as I possibly can, and then leaving the book behind. After I've done my 100 days, I just leave it behind. Okay. Very, very good. I was intrigued by the fact that you said you memorized Ephesians so years ago, but this is the first time you've uh, preached consecutively through the book. That's absolutely right, and it's very that's exciting. That's remarkable restraint, I think, you know, because <laughs> when I, I, a couple of years ago, was memorizing Philippians, and, I mean, as soon as I was getting into it, I was ready to start preaching from it every week. I understand that. It just has to do with providentially with the sequencing of my pulpit ministry here, and I've, I've just never turned to Ephesians. I've preached other books. But the time had come for me to preach to Ephesians, and I can't tell you how much benefit has come to me from knowing this book so intimately for, I guess, 29 years now. I, I literally have been over this book hundreds and hundreds of times. It's not an exaggeration. Maybe 500 times, maybe more, I've recited the entire book. And so at this point, I, it's almost like I don't need any more additional preparation. I don't need any more time in commentaries, although I do read them. But the years of thinking about Ephesians is very helpful to me. Mm, that is that is good. Now you you mentioned that you memorized from uh, what the NIV eighty four. Yes. And uh, talk to us a little bit about translations and memorization. Uh, do you have any recommendations? Well, I think we are really rich in the English language with translations. My wife and I were missionaries for two years in Japan. And the evangelical, the, the ch churches we were working with there, they had only two Bibles to work with. One of them was a very archaic Japanese translation, maybe even harder for them to understand than the King James would be for us. Mm -hmm. And then there was a Catholic translation, which was more up to date, but had some eccentricities according to a Protestant conviction. And that's it. That's all they had to work with in, in Japan. Uh, we have many, many good translations. So I think if you have a sense of what those good translations are, and I could list them, but there are, are many good, what we would generally call committee translations. So these are evangelical scholars that gather together and work on together a, a, a new translation. There's so much money to be made in, in biblical sales and translations that, that good groups of scholars every five to eight years in the English language come up with another decent translation. So I'm doing a, a commentary on the book of Isaiah now for the Holman Christian Standard Bible, and it's a good translation. Uh, so that's a new one. ESV is relatively new, and I think it's a very solid scholarly translation, very similar to the RSV, actually, in, in many points. Uh, the New American Standard is very difficult English. It's, it's very faithful to the Hebrew and Greek, but it didn't come over very well into English. So their top priority was to be very carefully accurate to the Greek and Hebrew. The NIV 84 probably did the best job of doing readable, understandable English, sacrificing somewhat precision. Um, so these are various ideas. The, mo the more recent NIV updates I would not recommend because they had a different agenda, I think, having to do with feminism and some other things that have come in. So I would not recommend recent NIV updates. Yeah, yeah, like 2011, that sort of thing. Okay. Exactly. I would not recommend it. Yeah, yeah, very very good. We're, we're on the same page there, so that's good. Um, I, I was wondering, you said something a minute ago, you know, the unintended consequence of doing something like uh, extended memorization of Scripture might be that it gives rise to uh, um, a measure of pride you know, and uh, maybe if you could just sort of reflect on that a little bit, because I think to be aware of that, uh, I, 
I remember, you know, when we were teaching our children to memorize scripture, you know, there was a sense in which we would congratulate them and reward them and they could become very proud. And the, the thing is, I think that they may have gotten that from us because we can become very proud when we think we've achieved something. So talk to us about that. Well, brother, that's a very good warning. And I think we all realize the danger of pride. It's a, it's a great sin. And I think the more we know God and the more we know the gospel, you see how zealous God is to humble us at every point. And that the gospel itself is very humbling. Uh, every aspect of the gospel from eternal predestination before we were born or had done anything good or bad to the role of the law in humbling us and breaking us down but in no way saving us to the fact that we need a Savior and that Jesus is our Savior and He died shedding His blood for our sins before we were born and that we're justified by simple faith, not by works. And then the, the battle we have with sanctification all our lives, struggling with sin. Uh, and then at glorification, instantaneously at death, we are made perfect by the sovereign power of God. That entire thing is humbling. It's completely humbling to us. So the more you look at it, you see God was very zealous that no one should boast against him. But that if anyone boasts, let him boast in the Lord. So just being aware of how prideful we are is a good thing. And then I would suggest that people just meditate on some key verses on this. For example, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. And if we recognize that, and, and also Paul says in Corinthians, if anyone thinks he knows anything, he does not yet know as he ought to know. So our knowledge should not puff us up. It should, it should cause us to be humble and to serve others. So that's a very good concern. So I would just say be aware of the fact that memorization, the ability to memorize, is a gift of grace from God. And God can take it away at any point. Just like when Samson's hair was cut off, he was immediately stripped of his power. So God is able to humble us if he so chooses. So I would just say, Lord, humble me, but I still want to learn these verses. I want to memorize so I can know you better and I want to serve you more. So I think that's the way to do it. Excellent, excellent. Got one, got one more question for you, Andy. Um, how, how do you encourage scripture memorization in your church? Because uh, this is not just something that you do as a pastor, but I assume that you encourage the people in your congregation to Maybe they don't have to memorize Ezekiel, but you, you want them to be memorizing Scripture. So what are some ways that you've gone about encouraging this in the congregation? Well, if I could say one thing that will somewhat answer your question, then I'll answer it more directly. First, if you were to ask me what verses I would, I would point to that encourage memorization, I would not ever say that Scripture memorization is commanded. I actually have no verses to say that God commands us to memorize. But there are many that commend or imply memorization. For example, in the Old Testament when the psalmist or, or others in wisdom literature would say that they meditate on God's word day and night. Any of the meditation on God's word day and night implies memorization. Because it's, you know, they didn't have printing presses back then. And so the average Hebrew, average Jewish believer would not have daily constant access to the word. So if they're going to memorize, or sorry, meditate day and night, they have to have it memorized. But probably the number one verse I would point to is John 15, 7. And Jesus said this, If you abide in me and my words, plural, abide in you, then ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit and so prove yourself to be my disciples. Mm -hmm. So if you meditate on all the aspects of his statement there, there's a, a double if. It's a constant dwelling or remaining or abiding in Jesus plus his words dwelling or remaining or abiding in us plus prayer that feeds prayer results in fruit. So then I would say, do you want to bear fruit as Jesus' disciple? I know you do. Well, memorization then I think is going to be a big part of your discipleship. Then in terms of people, I would say young men that I'm discipling, it's required if they're going to meet with me that they will memorize the book of the Bible. So if they're not willing to memorize the book of the Bible, I won't meet with them for discipleship. But those are special, focused young men, individuals that I'm meeting with, 
and we'll memorize and I will have them memorize Ephesians. And the reason for Ephesians is it's it's so short and has so much in it. It covers so much of the Christian life. So you get a lot of return on a narrow investment. So that's what I would say. Oh, that's really good. That's really good. Thanks so much, Andy. It's it's been helpful to to just interact with you briefly about these things and we want to thank those who are watching the broadcast live and then those who will uh, watch it on our YouTube channel a bit later. Uh, there's also some other helpful interviews there with uh, Tabidi Anawale about uh, the gospel for Muslims, uh, with Herschel York about expository preaching, uh, with Michael Haken about the Christian lover, Tom Schreiner about the role of women in the church. Much helpful material there. Hope that you'll listen to some of those broadcasts and, and read some of those books. Now, the approach to extended memorization uh, of Scripture is available uh, free of charge in a PDF format uh, by the Internet. And so if you want to find that, if you haven't already, download that, read that, and that will be a help uh, and encouragement to you as you seek to memorize extended portions of God's Word. Kevin, we want to hand back over to you, and perhaps you'll want to uh, lead us in a word of prayer before we close the broadcast. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you again very much to both, uh, especially to Dr. Davis. It's indeed been uh, very, very encouraging. Uh, let's come before the Lord in prayer. Most gracious Lord, we give you thanks once again for the opportunity we have to uh, read and to uh, memorize your word. Uh, thank you, Father, for we have been able to discuss and to talk uh, about uh, this important subject, which is uh, memorizing your word. Lord, we pray for the ministry of Dr. Davis and that you may bless him, Lord, in his endeavors and that he may continue to be used uh, for uh, your glory. In Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks. Amen. 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 Thank you, brothers. Have a good night. Good night. Good thank night. You. Good night. Mm-mm. <laughs>